Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Stefano Bergonzini. Um, you see me here during one of my deployments. I've been in emergency and disaster situation plenty of times in my life, professionally working as military and as police, and also in my spare time activities, which involve sometimes putting myself in dangerous situations. What I aim to do today is speak to you about disaster uh, scenario training, why it is important, and most of all, change your behavior, give you a positive attitude uh, towards disaster scenario uh, training. The product uh, we're going to go through today is in four parts. The first part is the introduction, which we have already finished. The second part, uh, the, the next part of it is going to be why it is important to train. Why do professionals in all fields of human endeavor train? Why do they train continuously? Let me start with a picture. Hope you saw the movie of somebody who was really extremely gifted at the peak of his profession, but he failed. He failed because he was not trained to do what he was about to do. And I had a completely different, the opposite side of the of the spectrum. I always liked to cite Captain Sullenberger, who actually took off from LaGuardia Airport, an airplane, an airliner full of passengers, uh, very low altitude. They lost both engines, and now they need to act. They need to react quickly, and this is when I showed what all these hundreds, possibly the thousands of hours invested in training paid off. Why? Because he was able to use all the resources available to him. He went back to similar situation. He had not trained for a specifically this case, but he had the calm. He was able to manage a level of stress. He was able to use all the resources available to him. Uh, uh, traffic control, uh, crew resource management, and actually splash in the plane in the Hudson River without actually anybody being killed, what's called the miracle of the Hudson. Let's look at some other examples that might be interesting for us. Look at the floods in Florence. You see here the so-called mud angels, ordinary people, citizens who just improvised. They had no formal training, they had no knowledge, they had no particular skills, but they were motivated to actually help. Obviously, the effects they could achieve were limited. We have a more recent case in 2018, a fire at the Brazilian National Museum. Fire department was able to intervene. They were trained to some level, but they were not trained for that case. They were not ready to actually face that sort of challenge. 20 millions of items of cultural significance were lost. On the other hand, we have a positive example, the fire of Notre Dame de Paris in 2019. Actually here, a fire department that intervened and had trained for that case, specifically, continuously, repeatedly, they were able to salvage 90% of the mover items that were stored inside the church. And now my question to you is, are you prepared? If your phone were about to ring right now and a disaster was announced to you to happen in very short period, how well would you be prepared to face that disaster? Well, let's hope that listening to this four-part uh, lesson, we're going to improve that situation. Let me allow give you some uh, definitions. Start with the definition for disaster. Well, in my mind, a disaster is a man-made or natural catastrophe that causes or can cause great damage, destruction, injury, or loss of life. So an event of huge importance, of huge damage, huge injury. What is a scenario? Remember, disaster scenario training. A scenario is a story, is a sequence or development of events that is created, that is fabricated to achieve something. In our case, training in order to protect cultural property. What is training? Well, training are structured activities to develop knowledge, 
skills and attitude focusing on performance and let's see that if today we are able to actually touch all these three points for me the most important one is the attitude the people want to actually do it if they want then they will be moved to actually acquire the knowledge and to acquire the skills that practical ability to actually do things to perform better so why should we train disaster scenarios well some of the reasons of the most important ones to me might be that well, we are definitely improving our response to disasters. If we know what situations can be, we study them, we can prepare for them, and we are better able to actually confront them in a proficient way. It helps us to prevent, reduce, and mitigate threats. If the situation has already happened, then we try to mitigate the threats to reduce the effects. But we, since we are pre, uh, looking at these threats, at these possible negative effects on our cultural property, we can also develop um, possibility to prevent this sort of damage. It helps us to test the plans. It, does, it helps us to actually put our plans into practice and see if they're working or not, and then to improve them. It allows us to assess our capabilities and our capacity. Are we able to confront this situation? And what if the, if the situation was happening faster? What the effect were, were bigger? Do we have enough capacity? Do we have enough resources, enough personnel, enough uh, transport possibility to actually face a situation? It helps us to build our team. Team building is very important, and you will see that you uh, inside your institution you will need the help of everybody participating if you want to be successful in protecting cultural property in case of disasters this not being able to do it alone also means that you really must develop networks try to find other people other entities who are in in the same sector who are related who can support you and that you can support also in similar situation, maybe giving them information what your problems are and how they can best approach them. Very important, we want to increase awareness. People need to know that disaster can happen, what kind of disaster there can be, and that you can develop scenarios, these stories that allow you to train. So you are, you're creating a, a story to actually conduct some training in order to be able to better face disasters. And the last point that I mentioned here is update. You want to be able to update your, your instruments, among which one of the most important is definitely the emergency and evacuation plan. If we look at, look at some examples or some principles, well, definitely taking from the military, train hard and fight easy. What do we mean? Well, then when you're designing your scenarios, you need to also build in some stress, build in some restrictions, some interferences. Let's assume that in your situation, there is reduced transportation capacity because your three trucks are actually not available, you only have one. There is an increased urgency. The event is developing faster than you thought. The fire is actually reaching your city faster than you thought. Or there is no power. Are you able to move in the dark? Do you have enough uh, headlights? Are you able to communicate, for example? Another important point is that time is pressure. It is, you will not have any time to train when the disaster already is happening or is approaching. Then this preparation needs to be made well in, a, in advance, ahead of the disaster, before the emergency happens. This is going to help you also decrease your workload, understand the right procedure, established procedures that you can follow, and also reduce your stress load. It is not good to have to improvise decision when you are in difficult situation. It's much better to actually program the or understand, analyze the situation beforehand in order to be able to respond to those. The training is the time when you really should be making the mistakes. So in disaster scenario training, you look at those scenarios and you build in the possibility that during the training, mistakes can happen. 
that uh, sometimes you even have the possibility to stop the exercise, to stop the drill, assess the situation, then revert back, okay, let's do this again, but do not uh, uh, commit this mistake again. During an exercise that we actually carried out in, in real life, we were executing a plan that had been developed uh, perfectly. We were thinking of a disaster that was threatening our collection and our cultural property. The decision was made that some of these pieces needed to be moved. And in the moving, together with a host of other actors, including the military and the police, to actually give us security, it resulted that we broke a door. Why was the door broken? because we did not have the keys to actually block this door uh, in an open position. So it was a sliding door, it opened and closed. At some point, somebody was passing through with a piece of uh, furniture and the door shattered. Luckily, our host was very gracious. They understood that, obviously, we could not be faulted because it, it was an accident, but they learned and immediately they established a very clear protocol on how to actually use the keys, who had access to the keys at what time, and making sure that in case of necessity, in case of an emergency and a disaster, everybody who actually needed to access those keys was permitted to actually assess them. This concludes the first part of my lessons. Thank you very much.